Okay. Okay. We're going to start the new parak. This is chapter three. Uh, it's after the Kedushan Ha'imah. We thank Hashem that we're both learning every day. In the course of our learning, we should have the best of English immediately. Right. Fushlema to the thousands of people. Fushlema. Wonderful. All the wounded hostages get uh, freed. Uh, I'm a. I'm a Someone tells his friend. Save a kaddish liisha plainus. Uh, would you mind, can you go and marry me, this woman? Which means... Marry for me. Marry to me. It's a bit of a marry. Marry to me. Marry to me, this woman. So which means that, take this money, and, uh, you know, as you're going around, you see this woman, you should uh, give her this ring, and her money, or whatever, and betroth her. she should be betrothed to me. So the shliach goes, He went and he met the woman and he said, I'm not uh, marrying her to uh, the guy that sent me. I'm going to marry her to myself. Well, she's married to the second man, not to the first. He, he was a shliach, but he didn't do his shliach. He uh, took it for himself. Someone that tells a woman, You should be betrothed to me after 30 days. And another person came and married her within the 30 days. So, what's the rule now? Uh, because the first marriage wasn't, uh, the first betrothal wasn't complete. So she's married to the second man. But the second man came and did the marriage first. That's called the second man because it came second. Chronologically, it came second. Although his marriage comes first. First one said uh, it should take place in uh, 30 days. If that's the case, then Bas Yisrael, if the woman was a non Kohen, just a regular Israelite, and she's marrying a Kohen, so the second man is the Kohen, then Teichel Shuma, she's considered 100% married to the second man, and she eats Shuma. Let's say the, the fellow tells the woman, I want you to be married to me from now and after 30 days. Sounds like uh, some sort of condition of when it should take effect. Well, we'll see in the Gemara exactly. But someone else comes and marries her during those 30 days. You know, he gave this ambiguous uh, um, clause from now and after 30 days. So what takes place during those 30 days? So started. It sounds like it started. started and, he and okay. So it's the rule is mikudeshes vein mikudeshes. Sorry, sounds like it's it could be retroactive. It could be chazara. Could be tanai. Could be chazara. It could be he changed his mind. There's a bunch of things we'll see in the gemara later, but um, it's a confusing uh, statement. So she's married, but she's not married. Why? She's married because it could be that she is married to the second guy because the first marriage didn't take effect until 30 days. Could be she's married to the first guy because the condition takes effect right away after 30 days. Um, and it could be that um, that she's married to the second guy. Well, could, the second guy would be if the first marriage. Whatever the case is, Bas Yisrael a Kohen, if she was not a Kohen and she's marrying a Kohen, like Bas Kohen Yisrael, or she, her family is a Kohen and she's marrying Yisrael, she can't eat chuma because of the doubt. We don't know if it is a good marriage or if it's not a good marriage. Yeah, we'll see in the Gemara exactly what's going on. Okay, so the Gemara starts like this. It goes back. Someone tells his friend, go and marry for me a woman. The Tanah was taught in a what, what What happened in the case? In that case, in the Mishnah? 
that the guy goes to marry the to, to do the uh, marriage and he ends up marrying uh, the woman himself. So Masha Asi Asi, the Braisa taught what he did is done. He's married. El Shinogba Minigramas, but he's a cheat. He's a uh, what do they what do they say? Deceptive. What do they how do they translate it over there? Deceitful. He's a deceitful person. Right? He acted in a deceitful manner. He went on a certain mission and he ends up uh, marrying him, marrying the woman himself. Our, the, our author of the Mishnah also alludes to the same thing. Why? I don't know. Uh, it alludes to the same thing because it says halach. Vahalach the kidsha. That term vahalach, what is it telling me, vahalach? He went, telling me that he went in a deceitful manner. So it's alluding to what it says in the Brisa, even though it doesn't spell it out. Now the Gemara has a question. Why in our Gemara does it say if someone tells his friend? And we had in another chapter, it said, Someone tells his messenger. Why over here is he called a friend and over there is he called a messenger? See, Gemara is being very uh, um, diet, didactic. A Looking at the language, the exact message and a friend usually written down, right? I don't know. It's more formal. The messenger is more formal, for sure. The friend is just uh, yeah, messenger favorite. is I'm sending you on a mission. The friend is I, I heard you're going to New York. Would you mind uh, taking a package? Taking a package, right? And not necessarily. Not necessarily. It doesn't sound serious. But but the one detail that would be different is he never said which woman he want. If, if he just said just marry a woman for me and the guy got married along the way and I'll, I'll find another one for him. So that maybe I'll say, well, I'll find another one. I, I, I wasn't really on that specific mission. The deceitful part would, would go up. So. Uh, there's a chiddush here and there's a chiddush there. What happened in that case where it says if someone tells his messenger? Over there, the case was where he sends a messenger to go marry a woman in such and such a place. And the person went and married the woman in a different place. Did the betrothal on the woman in a different place to the original guy. Ruben sent Shimon to go uh, marry a woman in New York. And he found her in New Jersey. And he married her in New Jersey. So... Over there it says Ain Makudeshas. She's not married. Maybe he had some specific reason for it. And over there it says the the shlua, the shliach. He sends the shliach. Hacha Rabus to Kamash Milan. Over here there's a chedesh. Ditan shluchay. If Bayasu would say he sends his messenger, have I mean I would have thought to say shluchu davar ramai. It's a mess. Only by a messenger are we going to consider him deceitful. The sam chadaiti because look, I sent you. Well, it's not like you were going on your own. I actually sent you. And Savar, I thought you, this is what you were going to do. You were only going for me. And now look at what you did. You, mar- you married her to yourself. But his friend, he wasn't so much relying on her. He told his friend, look, I heard you're going to New York. Would you mind taking this, uh, this package and delivering it to her? While you're at it, tell her also that she should be betrothed to me. So it wasn't like but it didn't have the same reliance upon her, upon the, the friend. Maybe you shouldn't be considered a deceitful. It's Kamash Malan that he is, he is considered deceitful. So the second hand he betrothed her to himself. Yeah. And he was supposed to go and betroth her to his friend because he, he gets the woman now, right? Yeah. But it's deceitful. Yeah. But he still gets her. Yeah. That's, um... Yeah, gave a sinister laugh. That's <laughs> um, Rabusa Kamash Malan. Um, over there, there's also a chiddush. Ditana Melachaveira. Over there, we say that the marriage is not good when he sends with a with the uh, with the shliach to marry her in a certain place, and the shliach marries her someone else. It marries her somewhere else. 
sends give her the kedushin in New York, and he gives he gives the kedushin in in uh, New Jersey. If a vader would say he says to his friend, "Have I a vader who the chikach b'kumach ha'ina mekudeshes?" So a vader could have thought that maybe when he goes to another place, he went to New Jersey to find her, so not she won't be married there. The sabbat leitarach because he thought that maybe he would. They, I didn't think the guy was going to go out of his way to find her. I didn't. So. Um, so I never made him a shliach to do that. But if he actually designated the guy as a messenger, he's only going for him. The Tarach, he's going just for him. Maybe the fact that he said a location was just because making it easy for him. Uh, by the way, I know where she is. She's in New York. Turns out she wasn't there. But I thought that he was going to go everywhere to find her because I sent his whole mission was just for me. So Kamash Malan comes to tell me, that even over the year, when he says the place, he was very serious about the place and not somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. Why? Why does it work like that, that uh, he was serious about the place? The Gemara says that maybe, maybe uh, the Gemara back there said yeah, about a divorce and about a marriage. He says he's afraid if he's going to marry her in such a place, they're going to speak bad about him over there and he doesn't want the marriage to take place there. People are going to say something negative. And if by the divorce, so that we had the same halacha and there was a chiddush in each one, over there I don't care if they speak bad about me because they hate me anyway, but in another place I don't want them. Right? There was, there was reasons he didn't want anything to, very particular about what people might say in different places. It's more important than marrying the person. Well, if he says, I think well the problem is he says that he sends a shliach. The shliach, you have, to, you have to do the shliach. If he didn't do it correctly, was he specific about that detail? Or was he just saying, um, this is her address? And if you happen to find her somewhere else, that's also good. But he didn't specify that. He... Okay. Robin Chasida Azal Kedushe Le'itzelebrate. Robin Chasida gets an honorific title. Robin the Chasid goes um, to marry a. Uh... Normally called Chasid. There is another Robin. So this must be uh, you know, the other Rabbin, the one that's not the traveler from Eretz Yisrael. Um, this is Rabbin Chasida. Anyway, he goes to marry a woman for his son. Now, Taisvis asks that we learned, we had a Gemara before that a child, would, a son, would never tell his father that I want you to go marry a woman for me because that's to send the father as a shliach. Isn't, uh, respectful, isn't respectful. What, are you going on a mission uh, from, for your son? So um, the, the Gemara does say that he commented in front of his father. If someone comments in front of that, I would really like to marry that woman, then the, he's not sending his father as a messenger. That would make sense. Father, so, yeah. Or it could be actually, I mean, it doesn't say this, but um, it could be that he actually sent him for whatever reason. Maybe he had some issue he couldn't travel. And anyway. Ravan goes and he finds the woman in Kitchel and Afshay. He marries her himself. Ravan Chasida. Uh, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say he loses the title. Maybe it was Lachon. Maybe like she was are. very Chasida. <laughs> anyway, Vatanya Mashiasi Asa Yalashnagba Milligramas. It says that that's deceitful action. You shouldn't be doing that. that. It says, Layavu and Ale. Now, I don't know exactly what this means, but apparently he didn't want the Gemara just uh, the way Rashi puts it. He didn't want to give her to give her to his son. Maybe he thought it wasn't a good match for his son. Doesn't I don't have any details in that. Whatever the case is, the Gemara is not satisfied with that answer. It says he should have told the son that. By the way, I don't uh, think that this is a, a right match for you, son, and I'm gonna marry her myself. So Savar, but he felt. Why didn't he do that? I was afraid that I could lose the shidduch. You know, you could lose the... Uh, like and then the, you go back. Like on the houses, you lose the sale, you know. He's willing to Real sacrifice estate. himself for his son not to get. No, he's willing to sacrifice himself. Um, the the, uh, the um, Ramos, he's willing to, to become a Ramai, not to lose the shidduch. Right. But the father... Going to marry her as long as the son doesn't have. Yeah, well, it doesn't mean that the father's trying to take him away from, wake, take her away from the son. Father thought it wasn't a good shidduch for the son anyway. So, it might, it might, 
he might intend to just marry the woman so she couldn't be married to somebody else and then he divorce her and marry to his son. Right, then he could have married it to the son anyway. He was the yeah, messenger. Yeah, he was just trying to lock her up. But he didn't have to lock her up. He could have married it directly to the son. But he didn't do that. But he was a messenger comes, from the if son. Somebody comes themselves after the father betrothed, betrothed the, the, the girl, then she goes to the second guy who came himself, right? No. No? No, she's married. So he's married you know to the father. Said? If he marries her. Yeah. But what if he's just betrothed? Betrothed, the same thing. Someone betrothed, betrothed married. He, if the son, this, here's the story. The son sent him, betrothed this woman, Mrs. Uh, <clears throat> whatever her name is, Leia, uh, betrothed her to, to me. And um, the father goes, and the father's name is Yaakov, the son's name is Reuven. The father goes, and he says, uh, he says, um, I'm going to marry you. So instead of Reuven mar getting married, betrothed to Leia, Yaakov gets betrothed to Leia. The Gemara says, but that was deceitful. Your son sent you on a mission, and then you, so it says, well, he thought it wasn't a good shit for his son. Who said that part? Gemara. His father. Right. His father said he yeah. thought it wasn't a good shit. So the Gemara says, but he and should have at least. Messenger can't do that. But he should have at least gone back and told the the uh, son, the Ruvain, should have told him that I'm not, uh, I don't think it's a good shit. And I'm therefore, this is what I'm doing. Otherwise, it looks deceitful. They it's said he was afraid if he went back. For a messenger. He went back and did that in the interim, someone else might come and marry him. Right. So he was willing to look deceitful. In order to not lose the shiddah. Right. So. Okay. For the sun. Yeah. In, in America folk folklore, there's this guy, uh, speak for yourself, John, you know, the pilgrims. Okay. Right. And he's supposed to marry Pocahontas on behalf of his boss. The girl says to him, Speak for yourself. What do you want? Do you want uh -huh. And he says, Yeah. So he marries the girl. That's deceitful by our law, right? Uh huh. Isn't that interesting? Where's Dr. Stein? Dr. Yeah, Stein, do you um, not remember Virginia Pocahontas? Oh, it <laughs> also shows <clears throat> that if the father would have told him not to marry, he, he wouldn't have listened. Why? Because the father wanted to this extent. Well, the father was a, wanted to marry her also. Uh, that's something else. Yeah, that's what it seems. And she wanted to marry her also. Well, the guy's name is Smith, by the way. It's John Smith. Oh, yeah? yeah. <laughs> no relation. <laughs> I'm only, we're only related to Adam Smith. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. All right. Um, just to be provocative. Anyway, the Dalit says, Rabba bar bar chana yav le zuzay le rav. Rabbi Barbachana, do you remember uh, the relationship Rabbi Barbachana and Rav? They are a, there is a. Simon a lot. So we have to sign this place now. He's getting out. Okay. Time. Time doing. It's uh, doing with Simon a lot. Um, okay. The. Um, the, the relationship between Rabbi Barbachana and Rav is like this. It's really a first cousin once removed. Rav, Rav's father, I think his name was Evu, and Evu and Chana are brothers. And Chana's son is Rabbi, and Chana's grandson is also Rabbi. So it's Rabbi Bar Bar Chana. That's what he's called, Rabbi Bar Bar Chana. Rabbi Bar Rabbi Bar Chana. So anyway, uh, this... this um, First cousin, once she moved, tells to Rav, Zavna na leila hayara. Would you mind, can you, uh, he gives money to Rav, and he says, can you buy for me this piece of land? Azal zavna na Rav went and bought it for himself. With his own money, obviously. We're not talking about that there was a, a monetary issue here. It was just that he was on a mission for someone else, and he ended up buying it for himself. Yeah, you could lose your job over this. You know, if you're supposed to be a broker or something. Anyway, Vahatanya, but it was taught in a Bryce and Masha, so I'll say, Yala Shanagba Minagramas. It says that uh, this is deceitful. What you did is done. He's, he bought the field, but it's considered deceitful. 
says Baga Dali Mahavale. The truth is, what was going on over there is that area. How do they translate Baga? A valley? A valley, the Alim, Alim means strong. Just like in uh, in Chumash, Alma is a young girl. Just called, or Alam, called Alim, called Alim, called Alim So it's, it's an iron, it's a rough, it's a rough patch. Of yeah, it could mean youthful or it could mean strong. But the uh, usually yeah, iron is uh, youthful and not, but with an Aleph, it means strong. But um, anyway, um, the people in that place were very tough. It was a tough, um, what do they call the uh, the association? The association was very tough, Syndicate. and they um, and they uh, wouldn't allow anyone to buy and to, to move into that place. So um, yeah, when I first moved to Florida, so the association and the apartment building that I was moving into. They said we have to have a meeting and it cost hundred dollars. Anyway, so I said, okay, uh, you know, well, let's make a meeting uh, sometime tomorrow. But here's the check for hundred dollars. Anyway, tomorrow I see the guy. I say, we have a meeting. He said, no, 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 it's not, it's no problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I realized that. I realized it was, uh, all right. That was the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Huh? Meeting or the hundred. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> Anyway, so um, uh, the Rav not going to be covered, but the Rav of Barbachana not going to be covered. They wouldn't have let Rav of Barbachana buy over there or live over there. They wouldn't have given him the respect. So therefore, Rav said he's not going to be able to get it anyway. So therefore, Rav took it for himself. Kumar's question obviously is going to be, he should have told Rav of Barbachana what he's doing, so he shouldn't be deceitful. should have told him. Says, uh, they're not going to sell it to you. I'm going to buy it for myself. So, Savara, the Hachivachi, also in there, Shachrin, is having He thought that someone else may show up and buy it instead of him, and he wanted to buy it. Okay. Rav Gidl Rav Gidl was trying to buy a certain property. And uh, I don't know if this is considered, it's in contract, you know, uh, something like that. He's, he's, uh, he's in negotiations. Also, Rababa is happening. Rababa, Rababa steps in and just buys it. Cash. You know, yeah, right. Just like the whole, everyone saw the negotiations were dropped and Rababa bought it. Also, Rab Gidl, Kabli Lur Abzera. Rab Gidl went and he complained to Rab Zera. Also, Rab Zera, the Kabli Rab Yitzhak Nafka. Rab Zera went and complained to Rab Yitzhak Nafka all about Rababa, what he just did. So, um, wait, he's going to come for uh, for Sukkot, Pesach, uh, Shavuos, whatever. He's going to show up over here. We'll, we'll ask him what's going on. He salak Ashkechei when he comes up. Oh, this uh, this is really in in Eretz Yisrael. When he comes to Eretz Yisrael, isn't this amazing that they were still going to Eretz Yisrael for the holidays, in the days of Rabbi Yechonah and days uh, of uh, Rabbi Zera? Was by a student of Rabbi Yechonah. Yeah, it's, uh, for 200 years at least. Wow. Still going to be in the regal. The weather is so nice. It's Tiberia. <laughs> you came from Tiberia? No, well, the, the yeshiva was in Tiberia back then. In, you know, the, I assume. Anyway, Kisalak Ashkeche, Amalei. So Rabbi Yitzchak Nafcha tells him, I think it's Rabbi Yitzchak Nafcha, he says, Ani Mahapech Bacharara. Let's say there's a poor person that finds a cake and a piece of cake. Herrera is a piece of cake that's cooked directly on the coals. Another person comes and just grabs it away from him before the guy gets it. But you see that he was going to take it and you went and you just took it before him. My, what's the halach? Well, a Malay, so uh, Abba says, Nikurashi is called wicked. This was a setup. He says, aha. Like, so, well, Amar, my time of it, Hachi, so why did you just do that? Like nothing or nothing. Yeah, like, like right. Uh, why did you just do that? You were, Rav Gidl was trying to buy a property, and you went ahead, and you, you bought it right before him. You saw he was what he was trying to do. Amalei, um, Layavidani says, I didn't know anything about those negotiations. So the for, uh, for sale sign. And I just bought it. I didn't know that he was, there was a, con a contract negotiation. I didn't know anything about that. So the Gemara says, Hashtanami, Well, why don't you sell it to him now or give it to him now? I'm not selling it to him. Because it's your first property. This is where the Gemara says, you don't, you never sell your first property. 
they don't sell it. However, <laughs> you buy, don't worry, because you buy them a ton of If you want, I can give it to him as a gift. You can give your first property away as a gift. You can't sell the first. It's not a good sign. It's not a good sign to sell your first property. Rav Gidl does not enter into the property. Because it says that uh, someone that hates gifts will live long. Now you're not supposed to just take gifts. Rebaba doesn't go so into it. So you're saying that he, saying that now because he understands that he wanted it, he's looking into it, he's going to give it. He's going to give it as a gift. Rebaba knows that expression. Well, look at this. Rebaba leinachas la. Rebaba himself doesn't go into it. Shem the hapech la Rav Gidel because Rav Gidel was trying to buy it. So leimar nachas la leimar nachas la. No one was using this property. The sky yari the rabbanu was called the land of the rabbis, and Rashi says that it was hefker le tominim. It was one of the students who would go in there and and uh, shvetzir. Yeah, I don't know what they did. What about the seller? The yeah, seller, the seller's gone. I mean, as a, as a Jew, does he have a responsibility to say that negotiations? I don't know. I don't know. Because it causes a whole problem. Things are signed. I'm sure it was yeah, signed. If it was signed, if it was signed, it's only about signing. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. Probably it was not a real contract. No, no, it couldn't have been. A, if there's a real contract, then it's done because you can buy a property with a contract, right? But he still bought it. I mean, could, could he just sell this? You know, scamming. Can't, can't get If there was already a contract, you can't take better off. Okay. So that means there's no contract. There was no contract. It was, you know, what they call today the, you know, in contract, you know, the, that's not really, this is not really a contract. They're like waiting for a bunch of things to happen before, you know. Taking off. Still taking off. Uh -huh. Sometimes they say, oh, there's a, uh, we have a, we're working on a contract, but we're still uh -huh. taking off. Okay, it's signed. Not signed. I told you one time we were looking at an apartment and they, um, they, uh, they made a contract. We we're going to buy it. And then they got a better offer. And they told us that they missed, they didn't sign one of the signatures. There's like a the hundred signatures over there. One of the things they didn't initial, they didn't sign. And it's, and it's, uh, we didn't see that. And, uh, anyway, they were very kind and they, we did an inspection. So they, they gave us the money that we paid hmm. the inspection. But you know, it's it was so a sly, uh, deceitful, the, the deceitful move. Oh, yeah. So if they wouldn't have gotten a better offer, they would have <coughs> quite taken it. And this was like the always like, a, yeah. I'm they, sorry. They, they deliberately <coughs> left that yeah. open so they could have. It. Yeah. Did we do that? Or was it so they just? It's, I mean, it's, it's done to you. It's done to you. It's over. Yeah. Anyway, I don't yeah. remember <laughs> the the ones if I did it to anyone else. <laughs> you don't have problems. We found the loop. Yeah, I'm sorry. Say the seller makes a verbal contract with a certain person that he can sell the house. He'll get priority. Right. Then the through the seller through the the buyer that he gave had a verbal contract with uh, another person finds out about the property through right. the guy who has the verbal contract. He told him because he has other properties. The seller has other properties that he wanted his right. his friend for. The person maybe to have access to, right? So the person that he told the property about goes and tries to, to buy take this this property specific property with the intention of selling it, uh -huh. not with the intention of keeping it. Right. What's the story there? It's exactly our Gemara. Exactly, exactly our Gemara. It's exactly this so, case. So how does this tie into the whole thing? What happened with the addition? Uh, it's just these are these are examples where the marriage is good, but the but the person is considered either deceitful or wicked. But in our case, he knew it was his son. Oh, so in those cases, it was when the case we are we are he saw that it wouldn't have worked anyway. So then we sort of like overlook the deceitful part. And so that's only if he could have won. 
interest. And if she saw that it wasn't has work, a conflict so. of interest, it's a problem. So. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Places over here. Oh, what the, the store in that the person is considered deceitful. It's considered a good sale, but it's just deceitful. Right. And what, what right does the person that he was deceitful against who told him about the property? What right does that person nothing, have? Nothing. Only if it's a bar rent. I want you to ask. No. I want I want you to uh, I want you to I want you to see this Tysus. Sorry. Um it's like the bottom of Bacharari. And if you have an English Kumar, it's not gonna be in there unless you look on the uh, the Hebrew side. But over here Tysus says a very famous piece in Tysus <coughs> that Okay. Uh, if the if a, a homeowner has a um, has a tutor that's uh, teaching his children, another tutor should not approach that uh, that balabayas uh, that that parent and say that I'm also a tutor. If you want, you can you know I'm available. Why? Because he already has someone working for him. He shouldn't go and and, and and try to take that job. Go to another parent and try to get the job over there. Look at this. Let's say the Balabais hired one person. However, the opposite doesn't work like that. You can poach teachers. This is what Taisva says. That if you, one... Um, parent has a tutor for his son and another parent wants that tutor he's allowed to go to that to that tutor and say that i'll pay you more take and take away. him away and the and the the parent can't say to the uh to the this poacher to, the, to this uh, other parent to the second parent he can't say that why don't you just go somewhere else there's no because i don't think my it's just beginning because someone else my son won't be able to learn by someone else i think my son will only be able to learn by this this person same, same thing with the first one no the first one was the opposite no, no, i'm saying the same thing with the guy the, person that, the first one was just income the guy no, no, i'm saying you're saying the reason is because yeah. my son can only learn with this one yeah another one can say the same thing i know but he's offering more money right the first one can offer a counter offer so then we can say the same thing on the other side. We can say that the second one. So when you're going back to the other case, we are the person that already um, has a job. Yeah, and then somebody else comes oh, to achieve. But for the, on the on the Malamid side, on the Malamid side, he should not interfere if someone else is already because working has business. a job because that's a, just a business thing. That's not a tariff. For him, it's just the income. For the for the father, it's the it obligation to teach his son that he has a different power. Okay. Be stronger than right. right. The father is able to, to poach another teacher, uh, another parent's teacher, uh, to, for his own children. It doesn't seem right. What if the father, the, the second guy is trying to poach, what if he, the father doesn't think he's better? It's just, they're just two different parties. Right, right. So then this, this one play out. Pay the same amount. Then this one play out. This is the case. Uh, okay. Universities do that all the time. Yeah. They poach professors from one school to another. Right. They're based on Tysus. Based on Tysus, that's allowed. Bechino im Alicia Scachili Kulo, Rockefeller. University of Chicago. Yeah. He went to all the other universities. He said, uh, found the best professors, and he told them, I'll pay you double if you move to Chicago. Ooh, they did. And they, they did, and the um the weather's horrible. But they <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the 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 Mishnah said like this. If someone tells the woman, it's funny, the Gemara switches the quote from the Mishnah. It's not perfect. Um if someone tells a woman you should be married to me after 30 days, and then another person comes and marries her within those 30 days, so she's married to the second man. So we enter into a very interesting discussion here. Let's say no one else came during that time to marry her. Okay, so, so she should married. be married to the first one after 30 days, right? We said it, you, this should take effect after 30 days. But she decides to change her mind during those 30 days. She, can she retract? 
Rabbi Shmuel Dami Tavai Makadesh is Afkish and Sakh Lamais. They both agree. Um, oh, one second, one second, one second. One second. Is this talking about the retracting or is that the next Gemara? Oh, the next Gemara is the retracting. Here it's not the retract. Here it's just that the money isn't around anymore. So the, the when was this condition supposed to take effect? In 30 days. He says, here's a down payment. We're going to get married in, in 30 days. Take this money. 30 days comes and she has spent the money. She lost the money. It got stolen. Whatever. The money's not there. What happens now? So take a look at this. Rabbi Shmuel says she's married. It's my timer. What's the reason? We had another case where if a man gives a woman uh, a loan, okay, and he tells her, pay me back in 30 days. And then it comes 30 days, she's got to pay back. He says, oh, don't worry. Just keep the money instead as marriage money. He said, she's not married. She's not married. Why? Because he didn't give her anything. The money that he gave her before wasn't Kedushan money. And the money that he's giving her now is not really giving. It's not giving. He's just forgiving. Forgiving isn't really giving. We learned this. Yeah, we learned that before. Then we had another case. Yeah, well, you mentioned this before when we did that. Then we had another case. We had another case where <coughs> someone gives a deposit to a woman and he tells her that, you know that deposit that I gave you? A deposit is something to watch. They're like, uh, can you please watch this for me? He says, you know that item that I told you to watch? Um, I, um, instead of giving it back to me, you can uh, keep it for for marriage. So that is already, the item is there, and that would be a good marriage. The only thing is, let's say the item was stolen. So it depends. Or it was, the you know, uh, it was lost or broken or something. If there was one, val one proof to left of that item, then it was still a good marriage. So over here, um, the money's gone. So both, if it's a deposit, and both of it's a loan, the marriage should not be a good marriage. Nevertheless, Rav and Shmuel both say it is a good marriage. Why? It's not comparable to the loan. It's not comparable to the, to the deposit, to the item that's being watched. The Bikadun, it's not comparable to the deposit. When the, the deposit was stolen or lost, whatever it was, it was never, it wasn't hers. So it wasn't a gift to her yet. It wasn't a condition. But over here, how did this money get, get uh, used up? Was when it was in her possession. She was already given it to her. But that's comparable to a loan because it's, a loan is also given to her. It says, no, it's not comparable to a loan because Milva lights on it. The loan is given to spend right away. And honey, but there's Kedushin in LA. This was given to her not to spend. This was given to her as Kedushin money. So his intention when he gave her the loan was not to marry her. It was only when she decided to pay back that she would marry her and say that you don't have to pay me back. Here, but here, the because the money was given in, with intention for Kedushin, so it, it like maneuvered in between these two uh, halachas of Bikadon and, and the milva, between the deposit and the loan, and it made it through it to be considered a marriage. Okay. What if you combine both? <clears throat> that's, a, that's a problem, because both of them don't work. Each of them don't work. See, this was... If the guy gives her a loan, and he says, you don't pay me back for marriage. Oh. Ooh. No, and that's yeah. a threat. <laughs> no, she immediately paid him back. back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't pay me back. That could be, yeah, it could what, be. It's what, considered what right. It's just a, it's regular condition with the condition. That's regular condition with the condition. Every every condition you can make a condition of. If I go to China, then you're going to marry. This was he gave her money for marriage. And uh, and he made a condition so she doesn't pay back. Then marry. So obviously the, at a certain time. The, the, when did he get married? When she doesn't uh, pay back. Uh, so then it would be. Um, would it be? Would it depends it if she says me Um If she says me achshav, then it's retroactive. If she like doesn't if she say go, she goes to marry somebody else. Uh, so that that's the our Mishnah where she gets married to the other person. That's that was the case of our Mishnah. Yeah. Okay. Now the Gemara introduces Let's say she wants to retract before another person comes. Can she get out of this? She was already given money. Can she get out of it? Because it was supposed to take effect 30 days later. So Rabbi Yechanan Amar Chetzeres. Yechanan says it never took effect. 
she can get out of it. Why? All of this was just a verbal uh, uh, arrangement. And now she says, I want it out of it. So that's a verbal arrangement can take away another verbal arrangement. Rishlach says he can't get out of it. He can't just take out it. We made a deal. Can't just say, okay, I want the deal to be over. I want to, to retract from the deal. No, you made the deal already. Rabbi Yechon Rishlach. Rabbi Yechon has a question to Rishlach. Is there nothing to do about Nes when I ask Avla? There is. Because here he's saying Dibor. She also is talking about it. Right. Say that by um, if money was given, then there's. Remember, where's the Gemara about the about the curse that comes? Mishapara. Mishapara. Right. There's, there's a curse that comes on someone that breaks a deal. Breaks That's only because the money was given, but the object wasn't taken. That's when if money was given, then you have that uh, Mishapara. Anyway, Rabbi Yechon asked Rish Lakish like, a question. Bitel. If he. Um, he broke. If he send the shliach to take um, truma, please separate the truma from my produce. Truma is two percent. To separate, give it to the kohen. And he says, after the shliach leaves, he says, "Okay, I don't. I just change. I retract it. I don't want to send the shliach to do that." Imach shleitar ambitel. If he retracted before the person took truma, then ain't truma si truma. Then he he retracted, and it's no good. Vahacha, one second. How was he able to retract? He already told him what to do. Now he's retracting. Obviously, you're allowed to uh, to uproot a verbal arrangement with another verbal uh, statement. Kashan Rishlakish. Gemara answers, Shani Nesinas Mosli Adisha Tachimai Sidami. He says, yeah, if it would just be a verbal arrangement, you're right. But over here, when he gave her the money, it wasn't just a verbal arrangement. Over there, there was an action. He gave her money. Rish Lakish says, I'm not saying just verbal can't uproot verbal. I'm saying that verbal can't uproot verbal with an action. <coughs> Rabbi Yechon has another question. I'm so, uh, yeah, another question to Rish Lakish. Someone sends a get with a messenger to his wife, and then he runs after the shliach. Or he sends another shliach to run after him. Normally he says, the get that I told you to give, it's, it's nullified. Or is a bottle? It is nullified. One second. But he gave the, the, the get that should be similar to giving, giving the money, which is an action. According to Rish Lakish, you can't get out of it. When he gave the money to the woman, so yeah, that's an actual act of marriage. But giving the get to a shliach is not really the act of divorce. It's only when she receives it that's the act of divorce. It's like putting your tax return in the mail, even though you have to hold on to that uh, thing, you know, certified or whatever. But that doesn't mean that they really got it. It's, uh, you, know, you could just claim. Okay. Um, so here it was just like putting the get in the mail. Right, it wasn't. A, it's not an action it's until they receive it. It's, there's no divorce. Now Rishlakish has has a question back on Rabbi Yechon. Rabbi Yechon says that words can uproot other words. It says, it works like this: is when something becomes impure. Let's say um, he's making a, a shoe, a cup, a bowl, a mat, a tablecloth, or something. So um, when it becomes a finished object. If something impure touches it, it becomes impure. While it's in the process of being made, it's not considered a vessel. It's not considered a utensil. And so therefore it can't become impure. Now, there's a lot of different <coughs> stages of when something is made. Sometimes people like the rugged look where they have a table and they didn't sand it down. They don't, they like it look, they like it to look like that. So if you decided that you want that rugged look, so, and that's how you're gonna have it. So it becomes a table right then, and if something touches, it becomes coming. But let's say you decided that no, you want it polished and shellacked and all of this and painted and all. So then it only becomes tummy after it's uh, all of that's done. Let's say it's a piece of leather, the same thing. If the, you can stop the tanning process at any point and say, I'm willing to use it like this. So the person's thought makes it be makabal tummy. 
when he decides that he's that it's a finished product, he's ready to use, it becomes tummy. However, let's say it becomes a finished product, and then he says, you know what, I'm going to do some more work on it. It's too late. His thought cannot take it out from being a utensil. He already made it a utensil with his thought. His thought can't take it out. How could he take it out from being a utensil? Only if he does an action to it. He has to re- the, cut it or re it. He has to do something to show that he's that it's uh, that he's actually making the change. It's not just the thought. Maisa, the Gemara gives us a rule. Maisa, miad, maisa miad machshava. An action can actually take it out from its status, but uh, and from its status, whether it was from previous action or from a thought. Machshava in miad maisa A thought cannot take it out from a, another action or from even from another thought. Thought. That means if he finishes it? Well, when is it considered finished? Depends when he decides. Yeah, he decided, but then it came to him, and then he really finishes it. So then... It's he, a mice. Uh, so if it's a real mice, then yes, then it will then change it. It's not a man. Well, um, over here, the Gemara says, miyad, uh, miyad, uh, tuma. It, it actually means miyad susceptible to tuma. Once it's tuma, it's over. I think once it's tummy, I think it still Even if you think needs change. to go to the go into a mikvah. I think, unless it becomes a, considered a broken vessel or something. Mm-hmm. I think what it really means is just the susceptible, susceptibility to tummy. It's considered not a vessel right now, and it can't become uh, can't doesn't become contaminated. Okay, bishleima miad maiselimafka. I understand that a thought can take out from an action. Blasi Deber modeled not mice, we're calling it Deber here, but we mean thought or, or speech, whatever it is. But according to you, one thought, one speech should be able to take out from another speech. If you say, I don't want it like this, I don't like the ragged look, I'm going, why can't you just uh, make it not tum, not susceptible to tumma? The Gemarian says, Shani Machshava to tumma, Rabbi Yechonon says, Shani Machshava to tumma, the Chimai Sadami. Thought about tumma is like an action, and that's why when you did the first action, you can't get it out by just the thought. When you did the first thought, that's considered the, the, the action. Why? Because the Rav Papa. Because Rav Papa says, the Rami, the Rav Papa Rami, Rav Papa, Rav Papa poses a contradiction. Siv kiit and a green kiyutan. It says, when the grain gets wet, I don't know if you learned this in Elam Matthias, when grain gets wet, it has to be that you want it to get wet. It has to be that you appreciate that it got wet. Then it becomes susceptible to tumma. So it says, kiyutan, when you will place on it water, but it says, kiyutan, if water is placed on it in the passive, which means that you hadn't even no awareness of that. So how does this work? Okay, so do, you, do you need it to, to be willingly or not? How does this work? It says, it's placed on it, but it has to be similar to that you actually placed it on it. My yit in the nichle, just like when you place it, it's obviously because you wanted to wash it off. Af yuta in the nichle, also when it gets wet, it's also if you were happy about that it got wet. Even if you didn't actually do it by hand, <coughs> that still works. So therefore, in order to make it susceptible to tumma, any thought that you have is like an action. That's what we learned from that pasuk. To take it out of tumma, though, we don't have that pasuk to teach me that. Rav Zvid has the same gemara, exactly what we had. Rav Yechanan, Rav Shlakish, thought, uh, speech, speech take out of speech, retracting, this and that. This gemara that we said, where we had a machlek, Rav Yechanan, was when she was uh, given a time that you're going to get married in 30 days. Here's the money. In 30 days, the marriage will take effect. And she decides that she wants to retract within that time. Rabbi Yechanan said, yes. Rish Lakish says, no. Now, Rav Zvid has it a little different. He says, Let's say she gave money to a, um, not money. She gave permission for her messenger to receive money on her behalf to uh, accept Kedushin. While the messenger was going out to receive money from Reuven to, to be married, she went and she married herself to Shimon. So Imshallah Kadmo, if her marriage, if Shimon's marriage came first, Kedushin, so. Kedushin. then she's married to Shimon. But if Reuven, the Shliach, that went to Reuven, that came first. So then, in Kedushin, Kedushin, then the second marriage is not good. What happens if Instead of her marrying Shimon, she just says, I retract from that miss- mission to, to, to get married from Reuven. I retract from it. Rabbi Yechonon says she can retract. Rabbi says no. So exact same machlekes. 
just with a different starting point. Over there, the starting point, the last one was, we are, um, she accepted money from someone else. Or, or she didn't accept money from someone else, but she did accept money from the first one. And here it's where she sent a messenger to accept money. So she never really got anything in this case. It's gonna lose one, one of, one of Rish Lakish's answers that he gave last time is gonna fall off over here. Why? Because the, one of the answers that we gave was that when she received the money, that's considered an action and that's why it can't come off. Remember, right. that's gonna fall off because she never received anything yet. So the Gemara just says like this. We'll, we'll go through, but uh, quickly, because it's the same thing. Um, says that you can't take back with words. You already established it. Rabbi Yechon says you can. Rabbi Yechon asks Rabbi a question. What are you talking about? You can retract. Rabbi Yechon says, if you nullify the shliach that you sent to take Chuma, you could retract. Rishlaki says that over there, he did an action to retract. How did he do that? He went to his own silo and he took the Chuma on his own. So that's an action that he retracted. Esri Rishlaki Rishlaki has a question back to Rabbi Yechonan. How does a vessel become, become susceptible to impurity? That's if you have thoughts, right? That it's a vessel. But if you have thoughts that it's a vessel, and then you have thoughts that it's not a vessel, you can't take it out. So but uh, according to you, a speech or a thought should be able to take it out from a previous thought. Rabbi Yechonon holds that one thought can take. So thoughts about tumma is considered an action, and you can't just take it out with a thought. Why? Like Rav Papa taught, Rav Papa Rami, it says that you have to place it in the water, and it's a, it's it's also it's written it's read if it's placed in the water. Okay, so how does that work? Okay, so he says that becoming tummy could be done with thought, and that's why it's considered like an action. Someone sends a get to his wife, and then he runs after the shliach to retract. He sends a shliach after the shliach. The get that I sent to you is null. That I sent with you is nullified. It is nullified. You have to you have to, this is such a strong question on Rishlakish that we don't have any answer for it. What's the question? The question is that he was able to retract from giving a get to, uh, to a shliach. He was able to take it back. You see that his words, he's able to retract from his own words. So therefore, if he made a shliach, if she made a shliach to receive Kedushin, she can also retract from that as well. The kasha on Rishlakish. Why, why does he use a get instead of using Kedushin? Like if he sent a shliach to Oh, and they, said, uh, because one. because by kedushin, I don't know. Well, I get it on the other. Yeah, that's right. I have to think. Hilchas Kavas said, "Rabbi Yechonon, v'afilu b'kamais said, 'Alach like Rabbi Yechonon, even by the first case.'" V'afu gav dekalamei mashan to see the smell of yadis and kamais said, "Amir afilu hachi asidimer mevatel diber." Let's leave it over here because this is not, but even though the Gemara is not finished, but it's good enough. Okay. Yeah, well, like we had 10 uh, um, learning today. Have a good day, uh, everyone. Uh, Are you all right? All right. Doesn't, Obviously, so. Bye. doesn't the, um, the question of doubt?